Where are we? We're in Zaragoza. Welcome to Zaragoza. So we just arrived here at our hotel after being on the bus for about, what was it, four hours? Yeah, something like that? exactly four hours. Exactly four hours. And we got the bus company Jimenez, I think it's called. Jimenez. Yeah, so we had never used this company before. Previously, we used Alsa. And the Asla, overall... I think. Alsa, I think yeah. it's Asla. Asla? Know. It's Asla or Elsa. There's I think it's a, companies. There's different companies. I think, it's, I think it's Elsa. But anyways, uh, yeah, the journey was about four hours. Uh, it cost us about 21 euros for one way per person. So overall, the price isn't that bad. I would say the experience was fine. It had a USB to charge our phones. The seats were decently comfortable, but... When you compare it to things like the mega buses and the well, what's the other company Flixbus? Flixbus is popular in eh, Europe. Yeah, it's just okay because we've been on buses that were I don't know three hours for like ten euros when yes. we used to live in Berlin, and I don't know they were maybe yeah five to ten euros and equally as comfortable at least if not more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're excited um, to see Zaragoza. What's interesting about Zaragoza is that it's actually the fifth largest city in Spain population-wise, but I don't think it's very popular amongst tourists. Like I've actually never met anyone who's come, come to Zaragoza. Most people go to Madrid or Barcelona or beachy destinations, but not to Zaragoza. So I'm quite excited to see what it's like. It looks really beautiful in the pictures. Um, Location-wise, we're kind of halfway, like right in the middle between Valencia and the uh, north northern coast of Spain. Um, and yeah, it's the capital of the northeastern area in Spain called Aragon. Yeah, we're excited to see it. We just checked in. Do we want to do a room tour? Yeah, uh, why don't we do that? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the Eurostars Hotel in Zaragoza. It's right at the train station slash bus station. And we decided to stay here because um, we're taking another bus tomorrow. We're actually only staying here for one night. So it was the best decision um, time-wise. It costs 79 euros a night, which is a bit more than we normally like to spend. But it is a four-star hotel, apparently. Yeah. It's quite nice and it's convenient. This is the bathroom. There's, maybe you can just go in. There's a toilet. But um, just a normal bathroom. Beautiful. Pretty basic. And then there's nice wardrobes here. I'm still waiting that one day maybe we're going to get a bathroom. But I don't think it's going to happen. We're not fancy enough for bathroom. Um, bed. Two single beds technically, but oh well. TV, which we never really use. It does have a fridge mm. right here. Handy. Oh, the stuff in there, but I guess it costs money. And the beautiful view of parking lot or something. But it's quite nice. So, where are we headed right now? We're going to Café de Levante, which is apparently a cafe that's 122 years old. And we're going to have some toritas. I don't know, I need to look it up. Pretty much a Spanish <laughs> version of uh, French toast. So 
we're at Cafe de Levante and we're gonna have um, torritas, um, which is the Spanish version of French toast. I think you can get it in other places, but this place actually has been open since 1895. And yeah, we're gonna try it. See what it's like. I've actually never had French toast, I don't think. And there is a German yeah, version. Yeah, yeah. But apparently it's bread, soap, milk, wine maybe sometimes, and eggs. Tastes like sweet. Vanilla? Cinnamon? I don't know, they said that it's a version or a mix between French toast and bread pudding. I've had bread pudding, so maybe it is similar. I'm curious to see what you think. Because you've had French toast, right? <laughs> he nodded, so let's say yes, I guess. Yes. <laughs> mm. But yeah, it's kind of fluffy, kind of souffle like. It has like a Christmas kind of flavor. It's good. All right, so now I'm going to try it, see how it is. It's super soft. It's way softer than I thought it was going to be, actually. Mm. It's definitely much softer than I would normally think my French toast would be, but it essentially is just French toast. I mean, they call it Spanish French toast, but growing up, I used to have it all the time. And um, it's very similar, but basically just use stale bread, a bread bread that's gone a couple days old, dip it in, in milk and egg solution, and then you put usually sugar or cinnamon or something like that on it. But as Ani said, apparently in Spain, with this version, you can get a version that is soaked in red wine and some of them have some sort of orange glaze with them which I think that would have been a lot more interesting to try because this one's pretty much just normal fresh toast but no that was for the cheesecake but yeah. but it's really good it's still delicious but it's very very soft like can you see the texture it's so squishy but mm. It's really good though. You could definitely eat like five of these. So obviously we live in Valencia, we've had horchata many times, so I don't know if it's possible that it can live up to the <laughs> horchata we already have there. But we'll give it a go anyway. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. This one has like little bits of ice, so it's really nice and chilled. Like the supermarket? No, I mean it feels more homemade, it feels more authentic than what you'd get in the supermarket, but it's really creamy, it's frothy, it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. I would say it's on par with what we already get back in the Wednesday, but delicious. de Aragon which are from here at least from this region because it's called Aragon I think they're kind of like jelly fruit jelly or something covered in chocolate and there's different kinds I think I got I don't know she told me I think anyway I'm gonna try this one it doesn't sound one. very good to me but you never know maybe it's actually delicious I don't know, when I read about it, it kind of sounded a bit like marzipan or something and I was like, oh, I really like that. 
So they're all different flavors? Or what? Yeah. Okay, let me see. It's like a kind of a turd. Looks like a turd. Let's see if it tastes like a turd. I think it's kind of exactly what I thought it would be like. It's kind of like this hard jelly. Sounds like a grandma candy. Yeah, that's what it is. It's those like grandma fruit jelly candies that are covered in chocolate. Damn. <laughs> but it's from here, so we had to try it. It's okay though. It's, it's better. It tastes kind of real. Like I don't know what, what fruit this is. Something that's yellow, orange, maybe. I don't know. But um, it tastes like kind Back of like, orange, so maybe it's orange. like real fruit in a way. Like it doesn't taste like too artificial. <laughs> Look, there's skulls everywhere. Basilica de Nuestra Señora del Pilar, which is a Catholic church. Um, I think it's very beautiful inside. I don't know if you can go inside. Wait. We don't really go inside this kind of places because usually it costs money and we're poor. So. But I think this one's free. Is it free? Yeah, it's and it looked out. very, very pretty. So we just got out of the Basilica. It was super beautiful in there, but they don't allow any sort of filming pictures, anything. It was also dead quiet in there, as in like you could hear a pin drop. So. I didn't want to be the weird person like sneaking out a camera <laughs> trying to film something but they had these really tall dome ceilings with murals everywhere big elaborate sculptures is kind of your typical church but nicer what did you think about it, it was a church <laughs> no i thought it was kind of uh, confusing i was uh, i was thinking like i was sure if like tourists were allowed at the time i don't know yeah there was somebody talking to the priest or whatever like in yeah one of doing confessional <laughs> confessions <laughs> walking past yeah. so it's a bit strange um, but i mean it is a church so that I people can think are... about is like brandon's upside down cross on his leg um, yeah why we walk through there and the priest is standing there it's true i also have like a pentagram on my neck every time i go into a church i feel like i'm gonna burst into flames it was definitely worth a visit i would say anybody who actually comes to zaragoza should definitely go inside because it's worth a look even if you can't film actually open from 3 p.m. and most bars like that are normally not open till 10 or they're not open at all because they're only open on weekends and we thought it was maybe too touristy from the outside but it's actually quite cool it has like kitschy stuff and I don't know old vintage antique things and dolls on the, on the walls so it's quite cool and the beer was only 3.15 quite big because we we don't have um, a place to go right now because our reservation for dinner is, isn't done until 8 or 8.30 or something. So we have to drink until then.
So, we are two beers down from Rock and Blues. We are now on our way to a new bar. Where are we going now? Uh, Infiernos Rock Sisters. Mm. Sisters? I don't know. It looks like another rock metal kind of bar. We'll see how it goes. I don't really know anything about it, but now we've got another hour at least to kill. So we'll see. starving and waiting to finally eat, we are here at the restaurant. So the restaurant is called La Rinconada de Lorenzo and we are going to order a couple of local dishes known here in Zaragoza. But for now, we are going to wait, we are going to order some drinks and we'll see how everything turns out. So, we finally have our first dish, garbanzos con bogavante. So it's basically a chickpea dish with lobster inside. It's so got a very seafood smell. It smells delicious. I had a tiny little taste of it already. It tastes amazing. I'll try some of it now. It's mm. hot. It's delicious. If you're a big seafood fan and you love lobster, then you'll definitely like this. It's got the creamy chickpeas, a super seafoody taste. Right here, it's got a whole lobster claw inside and part of a tail. So, delicious. I, I can't do this. <laughs> Is this right? Perfect. I don't want to do it. So what are we eating now? So we're eating migas capitas. And I thought it was grapes, but it's actually blueberries in this case. I think. Oh wait, no, it is grapes. It is just not the green ones. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So one version that has the green grapes, I guess this one has purple. So it is grapes. With what? Sausage, egg, and ham. Um, breadcrumbs. Um, breadcrumbs? Is this all breadcrumbs? Yeah. Okay, and an egg. So let's see. Let's open. Oh. Nice egg yolk. Um. It's delicious. So, what am I supposed to do? Take a bit of everything? Take it great. Come on. I feel like the sausage is quite big. Okay. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I think the seeds and the grapes. I don't know, I just put on something. Is it good? Is it weird? Yeah. No. I feel like the, the sweetness of the grape actually works well with the rest. Like it's it just kind of tastes like when you eat like jam with. Camembert cheese or something like that. Like it tastes 
like belongs together. Yeah, it's sweet. It has like a meaty flavor of the sausage, sweet of the grape, and gives it a bit of like runniness, like moisture. It's good. So our final dish is Donasco de Aragon, which is basically just a roast lamb. Dish. So we have this roasted lamb, we've got some potatoes, it looks like we've got a roasted red pepper. Looks really good. And they even divvied it up into two little portions for us, which is nice. Let's see. You can see the meat. It's not white like the one that we had in uh, Madrid, that really young milk fed lamb, which we didn't really like that much because it actually didn't have the lamb flavor at all. So let's see if this one's different. Oh yeah, this has the lamb flavor that you love. Super soft, meaty, salty, delicious. I can guarantee you that you're gonna be in love with this. So we're finally home after 24 hours exploring Zaragoza on foot. I think that we were walking around for about, I don't know, seven hours. So we are absolutely wiped. We're going to go to bed. And that is it for our 24 hours. Do you have a verdict? No. Zaragoza <laughs> no. was wonderful. Overall, we actually really liked it here. It was um, a really nice city. It was pretty. It did remind us a little bit of Valencia, but a couple things were lacking. Like the transportation was kind of not great. We just got home now at 11 something because there was no train, no bus or anything to take us home at 10 o'clock at night on a Friday. So that was one thing that we didn't like too much. Usually in Valencia, it's pretty easy to get home. There's always free nows, taxis everywhere and all that and here they don't even have free now so it was either trying to hail a random cab or walking so we ended up just walking but finally well, we're back home they do have a tram which yeah makes but it was it a, seem a bit more like a i don't know city yeah but we couldn't get it yeah so at least now we're back and we were absolutely wiped we got up at i don't know six o'clock this morning and we have to get up at six o'clock tomorrow so now you're off to bed good night <laughs>